guys, it's Erica, and this little video here is just a thank you guys for 200 subscribers. Um, it's just my second time getting it. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, and I'm just so grateful that you guys are here with me and with me on this journey. And I love doing um, my reactions and different things and stuff like that. And I wanted to make this video. I, I have plans for like different sort of content that I want to do. But the thing is, I would want more of an audience, more subscribers, want my channel to be a little bit bigger before I um, really get into those and stuff, just because I want a bigger audience for that. I want more of what I can give in my video ideas out there um, and stuff. So yeah, that's sort of how we're going here. And I did 20 facts about me. Um, that's what this video is, if you can't tell by the title. Um, so yeah, and I thought, you know, if I start making these little videos, um, I can just redo them in the future if need be, which I will probably do because nothing is ever, like, perfect and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so, you know, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I have a list. But, uh, I'm gonna forget and miss and mess up something. Probably anyways, but, um, yeah, so we're gonna go. So, and 200 subscribers, 20 facts, 2, 2, 2, 0, not 2, 2, 0, zero like 200 facts, that'd be pointless and stuff. I don't think I could come up with that much, but, um, yeah, so let's jump right into it. I have some stuff personally, so you guys can get to know me more than just somebody who likes K-pop and decides to react to it, but get to know me as a bit of a person and stuff, so... Yeah, and then also I have some K-pop related stuff because my channel is very much K-pop related, <laughs> kind of all it's about. But, um, yeah, so first off, um, my name is Erica Justine Medina, and that's not a secret. My YouTube channel name is Erica Justine, my first name being Erica, my middle name being Justine, and my last name Medina. That's not a secret either because it's on my social media as well, so it's not like I'm trying to hide who I am sort of thing. So, yeah, that's... Just my full name, that's all there is pretty much to that one. Just clarifying some stuff, even though it's not a secret, not very hard to clarify. But if you don't follow me on social media, you probably don't know my last name. I don't say it that much. Um, but yeah, another thing. I am currently, as of recording this, 20 years old. Um, I was born January 29, 1998. That's also not a secret. I think on Twitter it says your birthday, right? And stuff. So yeah, that's not a secret. And I'm... 20 based off that and stuff in America at least and stuff so yeah I've lived two decades on this planet which sounds crazy to say just like when you put it in perspective not like 20 but like two decades you're just like Ugh. and I feel old a lot of the times because I'm a junior in college and I still am going through taking 100 and 200 level classes with sophomores and freshmen I'm just like I, I feel old because they're, I'm just like you were born after the year 2000 that's crazy to me even though I was born in 98 it's a crazy thing to me doesn't make sense does it it does not um Number three, I am from New Mexico, which is a part of the United States. So let's go bigger to smaller here. Um, I live in North America. <laughs> I live in the United States of America, and I live in a state called New Mexico. If you don't know a lot of U.S. geography, but you know where uh, Texas is, it is the state. If you're looking at a map to the left of Texas, or if you know California, it goes California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas sort of thing. So yeah. And I don't blame you if you didn't know and stuff because it's not very popular. It's not very well talked about in sort of the world perspective of it. Um, yeah, because people in the United States don't even know that New Mexico is a part of the United States of America. So I don't blame other people when they don't know. Like when I went to Korea and they'd be like, oh, you're from Mexico? I'm like, dude, close enough, you got it and stuff. And I live close enough to the border anyways. I'm just like, pretty much and stuff. So yeah, but I'm from New Mexico. I was born in Silver City, New Mexico. I feel weird kind of saying where I'm from because they're very small towns and I'm just like, yo, if I get a stalker, they gonna find out some stuff, but please don't stalk me. If you do, I'm gonna call the cops on you. But, um, yeah, so I was born in Silver City, New Mexico. I lived there for probably 18, 18 and a half, 19 years of my total life. Um, so yeah, wait, that's probably wrong. Probably less than 18 years, probably 17 and a half. I would probably estimate I've lived there. Um, so yeah, not particularly my favorite place <laughs> and so I've always wanted to get out there and I did so I'm hopefully I don't have to end up living there because I'd be very very depressed it's not it's just a very different place compared to the rest of the world and I've traveled only in one other country uh not Mexico surprisingly you'll find that out later but um yeah just not, I'm not a fan of that place I'm, I'm proud to say I come from there you know it's my hometown and everything but it's 
definitely not where I'm supposed to end up and stuff. So, yeah. Um, number four, I am Mexican descent and stuff. So, um, just genetically how Mexican isn't seen as a race and stuff or necessarily Latino or Latina or Latinx. That's not seen as a race, technically. Um, what it is is, um, is more described, uh, mestizo, which is... Um, there's different kind of things, but that is pretty much just means you are of European and Native American descent and stuff. And I have had my family do different genetical testing. And so that's kind of just what I am either way and stuff. So that's pretty cool and stuff. The genetics, a whole other thing. I'm a whole bunch of things, but mainly I like to claim Mexican and stuff. I'm allowed to and stuff. Um, the, the closest ties I have back to Mexico um, is my dad's father. He's from Mexico. He came to America and stuff, and that's kind of like the closest ties. The, of what I know, majority, and stuff. Others, more like local sort of things, and just, yeah, and stuff. So, yeah, um, uh, I'll, I say I'm Mexican, Latina, um, Latino, or Hispanic is fine with me, too. Mexican-Americans, more technical term, even more technical than that, Chicana, which is a specific term to describe descendants of, uh, Americans that are descendants of Mexican peoples and stuff. So, Chicana is the most accurate you can get with that and stuff. So, yeah, um, number five, I am one of five children. Uh, I have one biological brother, I have two stepbrothers, and I have a stepsister, and with that, it comes my parents being divorced. So, my mom, she has not remarried, um, but my dad has remarried, and I have a stepmother, that's how that goes, and stuff, and being one of five is, it's fun growing up, you know, you always have somebody to play with, you always have siblings to fight with, and stuff like that, so yeah, very, very fun, very interesting growing up, and now we're all sort of doing our own things, and living our own lives, and it's really cool, and I love my siblings, every single one of them, even, even my steps siblings and stuff, and it's maybe a weird concept for some people to sort of understand, like, because I think the most sort of stereotypical conception of having a step family is that you hate them and stuff, I don't, I love them so, so much there, I don't even say, when I talk about them, I don't even say my stepsister, my stepbrothers, I just say my brother, my sister, sort of thing and stuff, I do say my stepmom though, because I do have my mom and stuff, um, but yeah. Moving on, number six, probably a little less necessary known fact, I did sports for 13 years of my life, so there were seven years where I have not competitively done sports. Um, it started out with me doing t-ball in like kindergarten, and then I moved on to softball. I did softball for six years, which if you don't know, is a female vor version, I can't talk, um, of baseball. So yeah, it's played with a big neon yellow ball, bigger than baseball, um, not that big, I've, I've had like a mush ball thing, that's something else. Um, but yeah, I did softball, I did basketball for three years, um, this is all sort of elementary school still, um, I did cheerleading for one year for my brother's football team, American football team, um, yeah, I did, uh, moving on into middle school, I did, um, actually did one softball season and one basketball season in, uh, middle school, but then I moved on to, uh, uh, I did track in middle school, and I did track for six years from seventh grade to the time I was a senior, and I did cross country for four years, so that pretty much says I have did a variety of different things, do different times in my life and stuff, but yeah, I did sports for 13 years, that does not mean I was good at sports, that is the, mm -mm. but I showed up, and I was there, and I was being all the people that weren't participating in the sports, and that's what sort of matters to that I. I tried and stuff, and I had the heart in it and stuff, but I was, I was never particularly good at what I do, and that's on me just being like not wanting to brag, I was not good, I don't have very many medals or ribbons and stuff from doing track and cross country, I, I, I don't, I just have a handful, and that's, that's good enough for me, proved what I need to prove, and did that, moved on from that in my life, after high school, did not continue on doing sports competitively. I do know how to play American football and volleyball, though, even though I did not do those competitively. And so, if I don't know how to play soccer, it's a whole other world for me, that one. I'm a disappointment to the Mexicans, I know. But, um, yes. Okay, number seven. A more current thing. I am a filmmaker, digital filmmaking, specifically. Major at New Mexico State University, in, which is in New Mexico, if you can't tell. Um, so, yeah, I love what I'm learning. I love what I'm doing. Um, yeah, and I see a future in it for me, so why not pursue that, and yeah, 
that's that's pr that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, originally, when I went into college, I in high school I started doing art, and I realized, hey, I'm kind of decent at this. Maybe I could do something. So I wanted to do graphic design, and then picking out um, what I wanted to do. I saw animation and visual effects, so I went for that one, and I went into the program as animation, and I transferred to the digital filmmaking side of the program, and I'm, I'm happier doing the filmmaking stuff. Okay, number eight. I have lived abroad in a foreign country, if you did not know. I lived in South Korea for about ten months. Wonderful. Best ten months of my entire life. My short twenty years, but it will probably be the best twenty years of my entire life. Um, twenty years? The best ten months, I mean, sorry. Um, and how did I do that? Moving on to fact number nine, I studied abroad. So my university had different things and getting into K-pop and getting into the Korean culture and stuff, I'm just like, let me do a crazy thing. Let me travel the world while I can, while I can kind of afford it and to where I have the freedom to do it and stuff. So if you are in college, I do recommend studying abroad. Anybody who has done it will tell you that. And go to whatever country you want to. Europe is a great place if you're from America because you get to travel to so many different countries. I would recommend that. I lived in South Korea, which is good if you can get over to Asia and you want to travel over Asia because then you could go to so many different countries um, while doing so and stuff. So that's a good thing, but, but the don't go to Korea if you're just like a Korea boon you just want opa boyfriend or whatever. Like, don't do that. I appreciate the culture and stuff. Um, so, yeah. Like I said, I would highly recommend Europe, and I would highly recommend you do it, because if, if you're American and you go past beyond college, you're trying to find a job, you're trying to establish your life, you, you're not going to probably have funds or the time to sort of travel, so do it while you can when you're young and stuff, and it changes your life, always for the better. Um, number 10, I had previous YouTube channels, plural, so the first one that I had was a sort of, um, I did a couple different things, I did makeup tutorials, and I did, um some different sort of tutorials. I did one for like uh, folders in your binder, sort of DIY and uh, reviewed um, the like Stitch Fix and stuff like that. I did that. That I had about like 25 subscribers before. I was just like, yeah, no, I'm not doing this. And I also had a previous YouTube channel where I did react to K-pop, but it got deleted for some copyright issues, which is a risk in what I do because I'm reacting to other people's content. And I realized that, so I'm not mad or upset or even sad that I did it. I was just like, this shit happens sometimes, and I'm, it's not fully my complete content in my videos, so completely, 100% understand that I am guilty of what I did and stuff, even though it was it was specifically to live performances. That's why I don't react to live performances anymore, because that happened. And before, they were okay for the over two years I did that I had that channel. And um, so I'm coming up on three years pretty soon next week or something like that um it's it was in november and stuff three years of doing youtube and um yeah and then all of a sudden just one day live performances weren't okay to react to anymore and they started getting copyright claimed and i had three very very quickly and could not recover and um channel got deleted but it's okay fine we're here now and stuff so yeah Number 11, my channel is very K-pop centered, but I love all genres of music. Pop, country, rock, death metal, screamo, oh my god, yes, jazz, anything and everything I have listened to and I love. And stuff, and it's just, yeah, I'll get into more of that probably a little bit later with some different points, but, but yeah, I love all genres of music, not just like pop or hip-hop or just like whatever. I love everything. So if you can take the country out the girl, but you can't take the girl out the country, okay, come from a small town in America. You gonna be country, oh, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, moving on, number twelve. My channel is very K-pop centered, so let's have some K-pop facts in here. EXO got me into K-pop, so I was watching. I got into K-pop by watching the React channel. I was very into the sort of the, their videos and stuff, and I click on one. I'm like, what the heck is K-pop? And then I see, it and I'm just like, oh my god, what is this crazy thing? And I sort of investigate more, and I, and sort of the first sort of, I guess how you associate K-pop with, like, a group. Um, I love every, so many groups in K-pop, it's not even funny, it's strange, I'm a weird breed, multi-fandom. Um, so, yeah, but, I, that, I, my first bias, the D.O., um, what else? Just, like, the whole, alerting all the members, understanding what K-pop is, I had that through EXO, so they have a very, very particular special place in my heart. Um, so yeah, number 13, kind of just, I have random effects everywhere, there's no sort of correlation to this, um, my first concert 
ever was a country artist, and his name is Jared Neiman, and it was wonderful. It was at the New Mexico State Fair. It was after, I think, the rodeo, or was it the PBR? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> talk about country. Um, so yeah, he's a country artist. He's absolutely amazing. He has a wonderful voice. I think he sounds better live than in the studio and stuff. He was truly amazing. If you like country music, I would definitely say go see Jared Neiman. He's absolutely wonderful. He's amazing artist. Some of my favorite songs ever of like country are his and stuff. So yeah, I'm a fan. Um, number 14. So my journey on YouTube, my dream, I guess you could say through like YouTube and what I want to do for a future career is weird to say that it's like YouTube, but just, okay, <laughs> let me try and explain this from the beginning. So around the time of, when I was in middle school, I'm, I'm very into video games as well, very sort of nerd geeky culture. And, um, I saw my brother was struggling through trying to get through this one part of a video game and I was just like why don't we look up on YouTube and see if somebody has like an explanation of how to do this because he was stuck. It's a normal thing you do. Um, so yeah, especially nowadays. Um, so we do and we find this guy, the Rad Brad, and he had a walkthrough style of, um, of YouTube gaming and stuff before YouTube gaming was kind of truly a legitimate thing and stuff within the last few years it has been but I saw him. it was Silent Hill downpour so around the time that game came out it was years ago Jesus and stuff and once I saw him and what he was doing I was like I want to do that and stuff so that's sort of been my dream on YouTube but it's easier to make reactions and stuff than um gaming videos and stuff not that I don't love what I do I love what I'm doing here and stuff but that is definitely the dream right there um so yeah um this video is longer than I thought it was I apologize um so yeah, um, another thing, I used to work at the Pan American Center here on campus of New Mexico State University. It's just the place where they hold all the sporting events, and not only that, but they also hold concerts as well, and different sort of events. So the first event I ever did was WWE Live. I saw the appreciation of that art form, and so I'm personally not a fan of WWE, but I saw the appreciation of it, and it was really, really cool to do that. Um, for, for concerts specifically, I was backstage for Blink-182, which was really cool. I was outside of Travis's door, the drummer. That was pretty cool. Hearing the tour managers talk and talking to the different staff was, was really, really dope and stuff. I don't have pictures or any, like, merch from them because if I accept that or if I ask for a picture, I get fired on the spot. So, yes. But, yeah, and I also saw Garth Brooks, who is a country artist, uh, perform five times because I was an usher for that one. And I saw him perform five times, and just in general, in terms of performance, he's one of the best performers I have ever seen, and so especially for America, and especially for country music. Um, yeah, dude, so even if you don't like Garth Brooks, I would say, yo, dude, go to Garth Brooks' show, because he's truly amazing and stuff at what he does, and that was cool. I got paid to see the uh, different artists and events live, so that was really cool. Um, number 16, going off of more concerts, I have attended four K-pop concerts specifically. So, we're going to go in order. I have all the names listed down. This is going to take, like, the rest of the video of my recording time and stuff before my camera just quits on me. Um, but the first one I attended was Soul Music Awards, and that was for my birthday. I have a little birthday present to myself, and I'm going to tell you who I saw all perform. So, I saw... This is not in the specific order, I think, of that they went, but just the list of all the people that I saw. So I saw Monster X, Nui's W, Pristine, Chug Ha, Mamamoo, Ailey, Suran, 101, 17, B2B, Blackpink, I Am Not, NCT, 127, Popa Gansa, or Bolsa, I'm going to just say Bolsa, um, Gus 7, Red Velvet, BTS, and Super Junior. So I saw all of them. That's a lot of sort of top performers perform and if you have a chance to sort of experience like a K-Con or a sort of K-pop festival like that do it because look at all the artists that I got to see just in one event crazy insane that I never thought I would ever get to see all of them in one go especially like yeah because they're all like up there and stuff and they probably might tour in America but some of them have some of them will in the future but just never thought I would ever get to see that many at one time and it wasn't like a solo concert they just did one or two songs and stuff but still truly amazing best like I don't know how long was I there like four hours and stuff it was freaking cold it was in the winter of Korea <laughs> but yeah 
super rewarding that I was able to see all these groups live and stuff. So, yeah. The second one I attended, that was back in, oh, the Soul Music Awards was in January, like the 25th, I think, of this year, 2018. Um, Hip Hop Playa Festival, which was in the, one of, like, the first week of April of this year, 2018. Um, that's where I got this thingy from. Um, Hip Hop Playa Festival. So it's just a hip hop festival for Korean rappers and stuff, and it was super dope. If you're into Korean hip hop, they always have festivals all the time in South Korea. So if you want to, if you're into Korean hip hop, it's very easy to see your faves and stuff. So I have a list here as well of all the people that I saw. So I saw the first one I saw was the Noel perform and stuff. He he was on the side stage. He had a main stage and a side stage. He performed on the side stage. I saw. From Higher Music, I saw Woody Go Child, Page One, and Sick K for one stage. They also brought out her name. And so that was a dope stage as well. I loved every single stage. Uh, Legit Goons and Rhythm Power, I was not directly in the audience for that one, but I was walking around the festival grounds while they were performing at the main stage. And they, bro, that crowd was so hyped for them. They were really good performers as well. I saw the Make It Rain guys. Um, people probably know Nafla and Loopy from... Uh, Show me the money now, but they are really popular in Korean uh, hip hop world as well. So I saw Natla, Loopy, Owen Overdose, Blue, and Young West, all the higher music gang. Amazing as well. I saw um, the VMC record label, um, which has Nuxa, Don Mills, Deep Flow, Wu Tan, Odie, Big One, and they brought out part time cooks before they came on stage. Um, if you don't know Part Time's Cook, it's that white guy and that black guy that are signed to a Korean record label and they have a song with Jay Park, that's fire. I think they're pretty fire too, honestly, and stuff, but it was really cool to see them. I love, I live for Nuxaw on this season of Show Me The Money 777. I live for just like Nuxaw. He, he just makes my day on that show. He's just so happy to be there, man, and stuff. And then I saw, oh my god, I didn't put down, I saw Dynamic Duo, but they're not on my list. I don't know why I forgot to put them down, but I saw Dynamic Duo as well, Choiza and Gecko and stuff. I don't think they brought anybody out for their stage, but um, they were really dope too as well. That was super cool. Justice and Paul also had a stage. Super amazing. They had released like an album around the time of the festival, which was amazing. I loved it and stuff. To see them perform live was really, really dope too. They brought G2 out for their stage to do uh, the Wayne off of that album they did together. Crazy. Man, that was crazy. I lost my ish. Everything was gone and stuff. So, yeah. I also saw DPR Live, and he brought out Grey for his stage. And Grey is the most beautiful human being I have seen with my own two eyes. Lord! Woo! And stuff. But, yeah, he is. Facts. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was a thing. And stuff. Also, Christian was there. And I, at one point, I would just... I moved my camera over to Christian. I just started pay taking pictures of Christian and stuff just because you need them and stuff. But um, also, the last performer of the night in the last uh, stage, the, I, that's the same fucking thing I just said. Uh, Jay Park, um, he for his stage, he brought out all the higher music guys, page one, sick kid, Woody Go Child. He brought them out and stuff. So saw them perform kind of like twice on the same day. Um, but he also brought out Loco Fire. He was great. Hot on Invention, which I'm so freaking, like, happy that I'm able to say that I saw them perform live. This was before, I think, the conclusion of High School Rapper Season 2. It was, like, the, it was like that next week or something was the last episode and stuff. But it, that was super, super dope to see them perform live. Oh my god, so happy I'm able to say that and stuff. They were really good. He also brought out Uwanjay. Uwanjay? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And stuff, he was really dope too, and stuff, so yeah, that was a crazy stage as well. But, um, yeah, and other performers that I did not get to see because there were two stages, and I, um, went, and I stayed at the main stage because I'm like, I'm not about to lose my spot for these future people, I'm gonna be up in their face on that, like, gets really close to them, so I didn't go to the side stage, but Huckleberry P, uh, let me go again. Huckleberry P, Giddy Boy, Haslan, and Ulti also performed there, but I was not able to see them. I'm so sad about it. I wish I could see them, but I didn't want to be running back and forth between the stages because they didn't want to lose my spot at that main stage as well. Third concert I went to was, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people perform live. I can't believe I have. Crazy. To, it's, it's even hard for me to comprehend that I saw all these people live, even though I saw all these people live. Well, I was abroad my university's festival. I didn't even say what university I went to. I went to Korea University, Sejong campus, not the one in Seoul. Uh, I went to uh, 
uh, small campus, branch campus, um, but it was still amazing as well. We had a really dope university festival. All the universities had them in spring. And for us, um, this was, uh, I think the last week of April, first week of May was when this happened. Um, for us, we had, we had one of the first festivals, I think, um, out of the whole festival season. We were one of the earlier universities to do that. We had winter. Amazing. Absolutely amazing to see them perform live and stuff. I saw Hayes live. She's really, really great. She was more, that was more of a chill stage. And then the third day, because they all perform different days, they performed like 30 minute sets like every single day. And throughout the festival, you had different student groups perform and stuff that were amazing as well. Doki and the Quiet from Illionaire. Um... I just say Illionaire because on the poster it said Illionaire, but that was really dope too. That was my favorite out of all of them. I was front row for Hayes and Doki and the Quiet. Couldn't get front row for Winter. Are you kidding me? No. I couldn't get that. Um, I didn't wait that long. <laughs> um, but that was really, really dope. That was my favorite stage. They're amazing performers as well and stuff. I'm happy I was able to say I saw them as well. For the last and fourth final K-pop concert I went to, I saw GOT7. I went to a solo GOT7 concert and... I was, it was my second time seeing them, and I was on the third floor, and I was shaking, and my, I had tears in my eyes, like, not when they were performing, but when they were sitting there talking, and there was just something so, just like, that hit me about that, versus, like, when I saw so many other groups live, even my bias group, BTS live, that was just different than to having that solo concert, and it was a smaller venue, but, um, it just... It was just crazy to be in that moment, to be like, I'm actually at a solo concert for a group that I love. Crazy to even think that now, that I was able to do that in Korea. Absolutely amazing, wonderful, and stuff. And I'm going to, there's going to be a cut right now. I'm going to uh, stop recording because my camera is about to just stop recording on me and stuff. It can only record for a certain amount of time before just like, hey, you need to stop it, start a new recording. So I'm just going to start a new recording on my camera and stuff. So I'll be right back and finish up. This, I'm so sorry that this video is so long and I'm not editing it. I don't think I can really cut around editing it as well, but sorry for the um, length of this video. It's just a lot I'm trying to get through and stuff. There's a lot of stuff about me. I like to talk if you can't tell. That was about a five second thing from me hitting stop and to record again, but we back and stuff. You will not see that it was five seconds. It'll be like no seconds for you. Power of editing. But number 17. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry for the length of this video again. I apologize. I don't know why this video is that long. I just talk a lot. I have a lot to say, you know. Um, 17. I have had nine. Uh, I've had oh, I've had 11 pets in my life. Um, Just more random facts because I think around the time I was making this list, I did not know what to say. And I'm just like, oh, random. I have nine, 11 pets. Um, I, put, I originally wrote at nine because I forgot about two of them and stuff. I, it's a lot of pets. So when I was really young, I had two hermit crabs around the time I was in kindergarten and stuff. And they both died. One was mine, one was my brother's. And they died. They didn't live very long. They lived, they, they had a good life and stuff, I think so. But, yeah, they died. And so they, I don't think they lived very long either. So, yeah. I had a hamster that was a, a dark brown color and I named it Chocolate Thunder. Yeah, but it wasn't, it was, it was just sort of just like there in my room. Like, he wasn't, he wasn't fun and stuff. Versus, like, the dogs that I've had. I've had, um, three plus three is six plus two is eight dogs in my life. Um, I've had, with my dad, I've had three smaller dogs. Two Chorkies and one Yorkie. Chorkie being a Chihuahua and Yorkie mix. Um, I've had three bigger dogs, um. I've had a Blue Healer Collie Mix, her name was Grasshopper. I've had a Great Pirate Ace, her name was Makina. And I've had um, a Rottweiler, her name was Justice. All my big dogs have been girls, and my little dogs have been boys and stuff. And then with my mom, I've had two dogs. Um, one of them, Jake and stuff, he's a Shih Tzu, and a Chihuahua named Cash and stuff. So yeah, all my little dogs have been boys, my big, dog, big dogs have been girls and stuff. So it's really fun. I love pets and stuff. I love dogs as well. I'm a dog person, yeah! and stuff so yeah and stuff and then there was a campus cat uh for my campus in South Korea um yeah his, I don't know I don't remember if it was a boy or a girl but his name was Nudie and stuff there was a debate over that and stuff so yeah he was he just chilled all the time just was lazy and stuff but uh yeah number 18 I used to babysit uh, that was my first technically job technical job but um yeah I wanted to I put that in there just because the story associated with it so it was like, I don't remember if it was the last week or the second to last week before um, 
I had to stop babysitting the little babies. When I babysat when I started, they they were six months old. One, the boy was six months old, and the girl was two years old. No better birth control than babysitting genet people you are not genetically related to. Um, so yeah, and with that, also going with it being amazing birth control. Um, the boy, who was probably nine months around at the time, he pooped on me. And stuff, it went through his diaper, out his onesie, and onto me, and that was fun, and I had to clean it up, and, yeah, yeah, it was, um, that was something. Yeah, you can't control what, what they do, but, yeah, they're very much, like, you, you get a different feeling when you're not genetically related to somebody, because I've taken care of, like, my little cousins before when I was younger, changed their diapers, and then everything, but, you know, when... It's just different when you're not related to them at all, man. So, yeah. Sorry for that story. Gross. I know. But, yeah. Number 19. I have a Yu-Gi-Oh! card collection. Um, This was originally my brother's and I pimped them from him. He didn't want them anymore. I'll take them. I pimped a lot of my brother's stuff. Um, So, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! Boom. Right there. I was a fan. We had even like a PlayStation 2 game for it. And stuff. I have card. This book is not filled. This has not been. I haven't collected past... Well, like I said, it was my brother's, so I have not collected past, um, oh my gosh, when, how old were we when we were doing this? I don't even remember, Jesus Christ, oh my god. Uh, not only do I have this one, but this one is completely filled and stuff, so I am, like I said, a part of nerd and geek culture, so with that comes collection of different things. We also had Pokemon cards as well. I literally do not remember how to play Yu-Gi-Oh, the this card game, um, I don't remember and stuff, honestly, and stuff. There's some really good cards in here. Some, actually, I think we ended up did getting the limited edition sort of cards are the ones that were harder to get and stuff, but, yeah, that's the thing about me and stuff, so, yeah. I, I, just something I don't think you would expect is that I have a Yu-Gi-Oh card collection that I still have for no reason at all, other than the fact that I just have it for a random reason. Um, and stuff. So number 20 is another K-pop fact. I have eight physical K-pop albums. So yeah, um, this is not in a specific order of when I got them, but you can probably tell when I got them by when they were released. I have Got 7, Turbulence, Flight Log, and stuff. I don't know when I was in Korea why I didn't get more K-pop albums. That was my plan, but I just, I, it wasn't on my list when I was in South Korea, man. Um, I have Turbulence from Got 7, Flight Log, Turbulence. I have three of the same EXO albums, um, technically speaking, but not practically, I guess you could say. They're different and stuff. I have exact monster version, this guy right here. Um, I did unpacking for my previous channel when I got him. I might do that eventually and stuff. I have um, the lucky one exact. And when I got these two, I, tr I thought really hard about getting the Chinese versions. I have the Korean ones and I didn't and stuff. But that would be even more unnecessary. Kind of. Not really. Not to me and stuff. And then I have Lotto, uh, the repackaged album of the exact and stuff. So technically, I have three of the same album. Which is sort of a little bit stupid because you're just thinking you just get extra pictures and stuff technically speaking it sounds stupid to fans it's not stupid okay it means a lot so yeah but even going off of that i got four wings albums i have w i n a w i n and g and stuff so i have four this albums and stuff so yeah, BTS and stuff. I do not know which K-pop group I have spent more money on. It's a toss-up between BTS and GOT7 because I have four of these. I have a bunch of BT21 merch and the festival thing that go into the price of that. But for GOT7, I have one album. I have, and I paid for a ticket to that concert. And I also paid for the concert merch, like the t-shirt. Uh, what else do I have? I have a bag. I have the little banner thingy and um, the light stick. So yeah, that, that adds up and stuff. So I don't know which K-pop group I spent more on. I, I can't tell you, but, um, yeah, but that's, that's it for the 20 facts. Sorry it's a long-ass video. I just feel like I had a lot to talk about, a lot to get off my chest, and there's still st more stuff I want to talk about. So, yeah, I don't think people are going to watch this one because it's so long and stuff. People like short videos. I know I do. So... Yeah, but I've, it was just some stuff I want to get off my chest and stuff. And again, I, I would like to have 
had a bigger sort of audience to watch these sort of things to know more stuff about me but in the future I can revamp it or just send a link and be like hey check out this video and stuff that I did a whole lot of work on took up a whole lot of time this is gonna be like 40 minutes I am so sorry I wasted that much of your time but thank you guys so so much for watching I love every single one of you 20 subs 20 subscribers 20 facts about me for 200 subscribers Thank you guys so, so much if you made it to this part of the video. I don't know why you would. I can't even listen to myself talk this long. I'm annoyed with myself already. But hopefully you learned some things about me you didn't know. There were sort of facts that were probably known or things I referenced to or maybe things that weren't necessarily clear. Or maybe things you don't know if you don't watch all my videos. So yeah, but now they're out there and stuff for the public to know and stuff. So Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video, especially if you've watched till the end. You are a blessing, and I don't know why you would torture yourself that way, but thank you. Thank you for showing your love and liking my videos and commenting and subscribing. I love when y'all comment, because then I get to... That's my interactions with you guys and stuff, too. So, yeah, because I don't have a big social media following <laughs> and stuff, so... When you guys comment, it's, it's the direct contact with you guys, which is what I really, really like and stuff. So, yeah, keep doing it. Keep if, When you like my videos, it tells me what you like. When you dislike, it tells me what you did not like about me and stuff. But I pay more attention to the likes than the dislikes anyways. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I, I'm actually tired of talking at this point. But, yeah, thank you guys so, so much. I can never thank you guys so much. I love every single one of you. I love every single person that views my video. Even if they accidentally click on it and they click away. You're adding to my view count and stuff, so yeah, just thank you guys so so much. I can I don't think I can ever repay you guys for uh watching my content and stuff, so yeah, other than give you more annoying content. So that's what I do and stuff. But thank you guys so so much for watching just me in general and stuff. I probably should have put this at the beginning rather than the end, because by this time people are not watching. Thank you guys so so much for watching me, watching this video. Love, appreciation. Thank you guys so so much. I love you so, so much. If you want to follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, such a Tumblr, Facebook page, all that's in the description down below, go do it. I can have more direct interactions with you guys. You guys can see more of me personally and stuff, except for, like, Facebook. I just post, like, my videos on there because nobody really comments or anything either on my Facebook page. I don't, I got, like, one like on that thing. Anyways, thank you guys so, so much. Follow me on social media. Get to know me some more and stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.